So anyway, um, you know, the Lord spoke to me and said that he wanted me to speak on how to develop a strong spirit. And I know a lot of you here are generals in the Lord, and we know that, but it's still good to hear this over and over and over again. Amen? And um, especially, you know, I keep saying this, moving forward in whatever we're, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future. I, I do believe that awesome things are going to happen, but I still feel that there's going to be a lot of shaking that takes place. So that's what I want to talk about. I know many of us here are fasting. And um, so this is a word that we want to hear, you know, about developing and building our spirit man because we are mighty people in Jesus and we are conquering people. And so we want to develop that. Amen. And um, so before I even get with the word, I was reading this morning in my devotions in Joshua chapter one. And actually, I, I went to Joshua chapter two. It's not on on the um, overhead there. But listen to this. This is who who I want my spirit to exhibit here. In Joshua chapter 2, we know that, um, uh, you know, and I'll read that in a minute where it says that, you know, he wants us to be strong and confident and courageous, right? And so he, he, the Lord gives him that direction for three times. But listen to this. In, in Joshua chapter 2, it says that um, it's talking about Rahab, and she was uh, a prostitute. And she encountered the spies that came into uh, town. They were, they were God's men. And um, what I love about this, you know, they said to this lady, listen, we want you to hide us. And if you hide us and if you honor us, God will, will, will make sure that you're blessed, right? And so listen to what she said. She said, all right, I'll hide you. She says, but I'm one, you know, she says, I want you then to protect my family, and what I love this, it says here, she says, I, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Let me read it to you, the Amplified. She said, I know that the Lord has given you your land and that the terror and the dread of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land have melted in despair because of you. Verse 11, I'm going to jump down. Well, no, actually, I'll read verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And when we heard it, our hearts melted in despair, and a fighting spirit no longer remained in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. See, to me, that's a picture of a strong spirit. That's a picture of what God wants us to believe about ourselves, that when the enemy, when we're encountering a situation, that's what he said. There's a dread that falls upon him. There's that, that fighting spirit in him to come against us, you know, gets, uh, you know, uh, falls apart because of what they see in us. See, that's what God wants us to recognize, who we are in Christ. And so in this Hebraic month, we just started Shevaah, S-H-V-A-T, and it's the Hebraic month. And I thought it was really interesting. You know, my friend Christine Bowles, she's the, um, I forget how she worked, the um, chalkboard teaching. She does that online. And anyway, this, this is like one of the things that each month there's, there's scriptures to meditate on. And, and one of them is Psalms 1, and to meditate on Psalms 1 and uh, evaluate your positioning. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The Lord says that he's watching over his word to perform it. And then she has here, let your roots awaken in his living water. I mean, we heard enough about living waters here today. And so we want to eat the word. We want to meditate upon the word. And so I have here that what is a strong spirit? So a strong spirit is one who's confident in God, unmovable, courageous, has a strong hope and expectation, has an overcomer's attitude. I mean, even though you go through hell, even though situations happen in our lives, it's like, I'm not backing down, I'm not giving up. That's a strong spirit. It doesn't mean you don't have your moments where, you, you know, you're like, Lord, Jesus, what is happening? But it's like, I'm trusting you, God, and I'm breaking through, and I'm going to stand, and I am immovable. Now, you can put that scripture up. Um, I have here... Um, that we want to develop a strong spiritual immune system. We've been hearing a lot about our immune system, haven't we? 
about developing, we have to take enough vitamin D, we have vitamin C, we have our zinc, our quercetin, you know, we have to do all these things, which, and I, and I agree with all that, I believe it. But what about spiritually? Do you know what we're supposed to do to keep our spiritual immune system up? And it's a daily process. And so um, we can be carnally minded or spiritually minded. You can go to church 15 times a week. That doesn't mean you're strong in the Lord. That just means you come. But what are you doing with what you hear? Are you applying the word of God? Are you singing the word of God? Are you meditating on the word of the Lord? Are you worshiping? You know, or are you caught up in, in what's going on in the world and in a lot of churches where there's fighting amongst each other? Who's vaccinated? Who's not vaccinated? You know, who's not wearing a mask? Who's wearing a mask? You know, come on. We're not going to act like the world. We have to build up our spiritual immune system and honor and respect each other. Okay? You want to wear your mask? Have at it. You don't want to wear it? Don't. But don't come sick. I'm just saying. Don't come to church sick. Okay? You know, we have to use wisdom here. But, but even the vaccinated, family members won't allow others that aren't vaccinated to come and be with them. Come on. We have the blood of Jesus. We're, we're, we're protected by him. I can't live in that kind of fear. I will not live in that kind of fear. I reject that. And so I'm not going to allow my flesh to take lead. My spirit man, I want my spirit man to be buff. You know, like you see Arnold Schwarzenegger or some of those people, I mean, they're buff, right? Well, that's how my spirit man needs to look. That's how your spirit man needs to look. It might already look like that. But I know that as I go through this, I want you to really just evaluate where are you in the spirit realm. Because that's what I've been doing. I said, Lord, I don't want to go into the season with old baggage. Amen. I don't want to go into the season looking and thinking like, you know, I was in the past where I felt defeated. Okay? I want to go in there with a real strength in me. So um, our, our, our spirit man, we, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to develop our spirit man. It's not, it's not my responsibility. It's your responsibility. We all have to feed ourselves. I don't go to your house every day and get your food ready, do I? And that would be a pity because, <laughs> Lord Jesus, you'd be in trouble with my cooking with some of it. But, I mean, think about that. So why would we then do it here and just want, like, put the pressure on other people when it's our own responsibility to mature in the Lord and eat our own spiritual food, right? right. So right. we have to read. And, and, and Lord, listen, the, the Lord has made it so easy for us now. I mean, Jesus, you have uh, Bible Hub, you have Bible Gateway, you have Blue Letter Bible. I mean, you have your own Bibles, you have your concordance, and, you know, so we'll talk about that. So I said here, all right, so man is a spirit. So when we become born again, as you know, our spirit is what communes with God, right? We have a soul and we have a body. Our soul are our emotions, all right? And I, now I'm going to ask you this question. Do you have a weak spiritual immune system or a strong one? All right? Um, without proper care of our immune system, obviously, we'll weaken. So think about that. If Jesus was interviewing you, what would he say to you? What would you say to him? Because, you know, he knows all things anyhow, so we, we can play the game with people, but not with him, right? So and what would he say to you? What would you say to him? If he says, where are you in the Lord? How, how have you been following me? Do you know my words? Do you have revelation on what I'm saying? What would you say? So in Joshua 1, 6 through 9 on the Amplified, I'm going to read it. It says, be strong and confident and courageous, for you will give this people as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers, ancestors, to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do everything in accordance with the entire law, which is key here, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from the left or to the right so that you may prosper and be successful wherever you go. The book of the law, another, it, it, what he's saying is you shall meditate on it from your mouth. You shall make the decree. You shall read it and meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything in accordance with all that's written. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will be successful. Amen. Three times he says it. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
He said it three times for a reason, because we need to hear it over and over again. We get, listen, just because you're standing in faith doesn't mean you don't have emotions, doesn't mean that you don't get scared or startled by something. That's why we have to hear it over and over again. Be strong, be courageous, meditate upon the word day and night, decree the word, because it, it, <clears throat> it counters the lies that we hear. It counters, and you you, it allows you to, to sift through the truth to see what's true and what's not. Amen? And so this is something that I have stood upon and I have meditated on. It, you know, when, when it says here, when you meditate on the word day and night in verse 8, that word meditate means to regurgitate, to, to rehearse, but it also means to imagine. Oh. <laughs> To imagine. Sound effects. It is a sound effect. All right. And so what are you imagining? You know, a lot of times we can be saying the right thing, but we're seeing something else in our mindset. We're seeing defeat. We're seeing fear. We're seeing our finances. How are we going to pay our finances? You know, many times we're thinking the other thing. It's contrary to what you're meditating on. So we have to get that in alignment. And, and, and there's war at times because, listen, when I'm strong in something, I'm strong. But I have areas that I know I have to work on. And so, you know, I had always battled with fear. I had always, you know, the Lord delivered me, thank God, from hopelessness and depression because I know what that one's like. But I, I've had a, the, the, the fear thing I have to work on. I always have to work on that. So I'm not going to listen to a lot of things that's contrary to what the Word of God says. It doesn't mean that your head's in the sand, that you're not using wisdom, but fear is not going to control me. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and of sound mind. Do you believe it? Yeah. Psalm 91, you know, no evil will come nigh my dwelling. No plague shall befall me. Plague's not going to befall me. Did I get sick? Did I have? Yeah, but did I get through it? Yes. When you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> You know, don't stay there. Just decree the word. Just say, Lord, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to use my head, but I'm also not going to roll over and die and listen to all the naysayers and say what they say we're going to have. Who's that? Who's the government telling me about my health? I, the word of God talks about my health. So here, we, he says, have I not commanded? Be strong. Listen to what the word strong means. Strong is a Greek word, indunomayo. It means to be endued with strength, to receive strength, to increase in strength, to empower, to enable, to increase. Inherent power. It's where we get the word dynamite. It's the picture of explosive power being in, deposited in some type of receptacle or, or container or vessel. That's us. It's the power of God, the dunamis power being deposited within us as we meditate on the word, as we pray in the spirit. All right, in conclusion, in, in, in Ephesians 6.10, it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Next one. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provide. See, God knows we need strength. We need encouragement. We need empowering. Listen, we're not just serving the Lord just to serve God and get through the by and by. No, no, he's empowering us. He has strengthened us, okay? And so that's the thing. I said, Lord, I want my spiritual immune system. I want to be a vessel of divine power. I want to receive a supernatural strengthening, an internal deposit. That's what happens when we come to church, when we connect with people that are like-minded, when we worship the Lord, when we are meditating on, a, I mean, do you just read the Bible like a half hour and then, you know, throughout the day you're on social media and other things? See, that's, that's going to be a weak immune system. It's the more you get in, the more you meditate. Because when I got saved, I really struggled with fears and big time, big time fear and depression and hopelessness. And I thought, Lord Jesus, if this thing is real, you know, I want it. But, you know, I knew I didn't attend a church, and I've shared this many times. I didn't know where to go to church. I, I came from a denomination. I was Catholic. I didn't know where the heck to go to church. And so I, I thought, well, where am I going to go? So I knew I had to read the Bible. And I meditated on the Word, and I read it, and I had little booklets, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen. It helped me with my faith, the Word of Faith. And I love it, and I'm grateful for it. And it helped me to get so rooted in the Word. 
And, and that's what, that was a turning point for me. That's what, I mean, I started to, you know, like that, I, I've given this example before, you know, Popeye, remember Popeye the Sailor Man, for those of you who know that cartoon. And when he would eat his spinach, his muscles would, you know, that's how I feel when we're meditating on the words, like, woof, you know, the muscles are starting to pop up, you know. And it's like, Lord, God, I said, that's right. You know, I'm this strong woman in the Lord. Why? Not because of who I am, because of who he is and what his word and his worship and, and all that he empowers us with, right? So Paul knew that we needed the supernatural power. That's why he talked a lot about it in the word. And so when you see that in, in Ephesians 6 where it says to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, it's how I have it memorized, that word power. Power there is kratos, and it means strength, dominion, power, vigor, strength. So he's saying this, listen, I want you to receive that. When you're meditating on the word, say, thank you, Lord, that I'm getting my daily bread. Thank you, Lord, that I'm being empowered. Thank you, Lord, that I'm being strengthened. Listen to this. Proverbs 18, 14 through 16. Were you able to get all the new ones in there? Okay. All right. Okay. So it says here, a healthy spirit conquers adversity, but what can you do when the spirit is crushed? Wow. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or beer? And then I want to read it to you out of the New King James. If you faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small. Lord Jesus, we have been in adversity in our country. There's been a lot that has been shaking. And so I think there's going to be a lot more shaking coming. But I want my strong spirit, my spirit man strong in the Lord. And let me just say this, please, you may have to just fast and put down your social media. I I'm telling you, it's such a distraction. It, I mean, it's, it's a good thing, but, but we, we, we're too focused on this stuff. I mean, some of you, in addition to food, you need to fast your social media, your Facebook, Instagram, whatever the heck you're on, else on, I'm telling you, it's a distraction. If you're putting more time into that, you're, you're, in, you're in trouble, all right? Just saying. So another scripture in, Psalm, in Proverbs 24.10, oh, I read that. Um, oh, I have another version. <laughs> you can see I was really getting into this scripture. In Proverbs 24.10, it says, if you slack and you're careless in a day of distress, your strength is limited. See, that's what... Um, I, I really feel like this careless word in, tw in Proverbs 24.10 is key because we can be really careless with our walk, not disciplined. Again, social media, different things that just distract us. And it can be good things, but it says if you're slack, careless in the day of distress, God is warning us. You heard all the words even here today. He's warning us to, to hear him, to learn how to hear, to get built up in the realm of the spirit because so that you're not taken by fear you're not overpowered you're not overwhelmed by like that word about being in a museum and so you know listen there's been a death that have occurred right so people have passed and when COVID initially started and um you know we weren't able to see people and you know different things I mean that that that's trauma there's a lot of trauma that's taken place in our lives and so the Lord is saying, listen, I don't want you to camp out there. I don't want you to stay there. I want there to be an awakening within our spirit, man. See, we have to have revival and awakening within our own selves first before we, we're praying for a revival. But are you doing that? Do you have revival within your own spirit, man? You know, God called us to be revolutionaries, to make change. The world needs to see a strength in the people that where they say, oh, my God, the, there, there was just, we're, we're, we're fearing these people not to be afraid of us. In other words, to fear and the, our God and to know the greatness of our God and that they have a hope. Do we have that atmosphere of hope? Do we have that atmosphere of breakthrough when we're when we walk in a place that when you know when the uh, when I was giving birth to my second son the doctor would always say to me he called me Patty and he said oh my gosh Patty every time I'm around you I feel so good and uplifted you know and so I'm like well then don't charge me anyway but <laughs> if you felt that good but but you know but that but because I would encourage him and I would speak the word of the Lord to him listen to Proverbs twenty four ten in the message. Here's another one. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. Wow. So are you falling to pieces? Now, again, this isn't a condemning message. This is a... Why are you laughing? You think it's condemning? 
Well, it sounded that way a little bit at the beginning, but I guess you're right. I repent. Lord, help him. You know, <laughs> it's not condemning. It's just we have to evaluate where we're at. And if we don't know where we're at, the enemy's going to kick your behind in plain English. If you fall to pieces in crisis, if you fall to pieces in over situations, over work issues, over family issues, if you fall to pieces, there wasn't much to you in the first place. I didn't write the book. It's in the Bible. I already repented. Stop. <laughs> Forgive me. A strong spirit will conquer adversity. All right, so how do you build a strong spirit? And let me just say this. Janet uh, Schuler is visiting from Maryland. She said, I don't know, for what it's worth, we had a word about uh, the mountains, you know, one of the mountains of the Lord. And, oh, oh, I know, Diana was singing about the mountain. And she said, for what it's worth, I feel like the, the Lord is, is building up the family, but it's toppling uh, the enemy's hold on, on family. And we, she doesn't know it. We've been doing a fast. We started in August for family revival. And so that's why we have a board there to put your family members up there. But I am telling you, God is restoring families. He's bringing restoration to families. So I want you to be encouraged. Be strong in the Lord. Be encouraged. Decree the word of the Lord. All right, so how do we build a, a strong spirit? In 3 John 2, in the New Living Translation, it says, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in your spirit. All right, so first of all, we have to evaluate where we're at. And I wrote here, this is where I said, if Jesus were to interview your condition, how would you do? Has there been spiritual growth in your life? Let's evaluate where you were from last year to now. Has there been growth, right? Do you walk in forgiveness? Are you judgmental? Are you bitter? Are you still walking and rehearsing all the wrongs that have been done to you? Or have you cut your losses and moved on? What are you going to do about that? God is the only one who can bring healing and restoration. We can't camp out there. You can if you want, but you're going to stay stuck. I promise you that. So we have to evaluate where we're at. Are you in tremendous fear? Right? Is it, are you weak in that area? Listen, it's, it's, it, it's, it, the good thing about evaluating where we are, it's like when you're going to a gym. You have to evaluate. You can't automatically start pushing, you know, 100 pounds or lifting 100 pounds. You have to start with 10 if you, if you haven't lifted weights, right? So it's you build your, your, your strength up, and that's the same what we have to do here. And so, um, so anyway, so what's your spiritual diet like? All right? We all know we like you heard what the men are going to eat. I mean, a lot. You heard about all their food and what their concern was to get men to come. Anyway, so just saying. Um, roots. <laughs> what? Bitter roots. No, no, it's like. not bitter root. <laughs> I'm just saying. He had, he had to lure the men in with the food. That's all we I'm did saying. It. No, we did it. They come every <laughs> week for free. Turn his mic off. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Are you reading the word every day? Are you meditating on the word? That's how we develop. That's how we get faith. We have to be disciplined. So listen, if you're not used to this, then get a one-year Bible. Do whatever. They, they have programs now that you can read and follow along daily just to keep you on track. There's nothing wrong in that. I have my chronological Bible, and it's a, it's a one-year Bible. It's a daily thing. I do that every day. In addition to then I read my own, and however I, I feel like the Lord's leading me. But I love the word. And so are, what, are, are you meditating on the word? So what are you feeding on? Are you spending more time on TV? Are you spending more time on social media? Or just hanging out with your friends? Or talking, 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 never listening? What are you doing? And so in, Job, in John 8.32 in the Passion, it says, For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your life. How many of you want freedom? It's the truth of the word that sets us free. It's the revelation of the word. I'm telling you. Uh, you know, we, we counsel here, we minister deliverance, we have counselors here, well, we're more biblical ministers. The, if you meditate on the word, in addition to everything I'm going to be talking about today, you will get set free. There is power in the word. And even as, a, like a counselor, us biblical ministers, we're leading you through the God, Jesus was the greatest psychologist ever, the guidelines of the word of God. And sometimes you've been through a lot of trauma. There's just been a lot in your life, so you need more help. That's okay. God has provided so much for us that we don't have to stay messed up. We don't have to stay in a place of defeat. 
We are not a defeated people. We are more than conquerors. And that, you need to speak that over yourself daily, that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. In Psalm 119, 23, it says, I keep thinking about your teachings, Lord, even if rulers plot against me. He meditates on the word day and night. He's thinking about his word more than what the naysayers are doing and saying, okay? 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 in the Passion says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God-breathed. It will empower you. This is what the word does, by its instruction and correction giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature, perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives to you. Listen to this. In Romans 4.19 in the message, Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never have fathered a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promises, asking cautiously skeptical, uh, skeptical questions. He plunged into the promises and came up strong. I love that. Yeah. See, see, when God is asking us to do something impossible, most of the time, I mean, I know I've done this, I, I, you try to figure out how he's going to do it, right? <laughs> then it's like God's like, well, if I needed you to try to figure it out, you wouldn't need me, right? So if Abraham did that, that this miraculous birth would never have taken place. And you might say, yeah, but you know, I don't know if I believe this. No, I'm telling you, it's true. God is the God of all impossibility. We have seen too many miracles to, to deny the miracle working, incredible, you know, groundbreaking, conquering power of Jesus Christ. And so, and I choose to focus on that. I choose to rehearse the word of God. I choose to prophesy. See, when you keep doing that, you really start to believe what you're reading. Your faith gets built up, and, and it's like where you get to the point where you think the impossible is normal. Why shouldn't it happen? That your expectation is so built up that you're like, like wait, like why isn't something happening right now? You know, that, that's the power of God. But see, we have to get out of our, this critical thinking and, and, and this intellectual mindset all the time, try to figure it out. Well, I don't know if I really believe that. God is breaking us out of unbelief. We can't go into the season. We can't move further with unbelief in our mind. I mean, I, you know, I, I said to the Lord, show me every, heart, every place in my heart where I've been doubting you. Show me. We all have it, so we might as well acknowledge it. And so... And, and it, you know, and then I, what I do is I get the word, and I, I'll repent to the Lord for whatever it is, and I'm like, no, Lord, I'm focusing on you. Either you are the great I am or you're not. I'm not, I'm not listen, I'm not one to just go to church and just go through the motions. I want, to, I want to see and experience the miracle-working, loving power of God. And, and, and that's what he wants us to believe. This is what makes us different from others. We have the spirit of God, the resurrection life that rose Jesus Christ from the dead within us. And it's powerful, powerful. In Psalms 12, 6 in the Amplified, it says, The words and promises of the Lord are pure words like silver, refined in an earthen furnace, purified seven times over. We have a strong spirit when our mind is constantly renewed. Not constantly renewed with doubt and yeah, but, yeah, but. These big butts, yeah, but, yeah, but, you know, but you don't understand what I'm going through. I know what Jesus is saying. I know, he knows what you're going through. I don't want, don't keep rehearsing the yeah, buts. Don't keep rehearsing what's not happening. Rehearse and decree the word of the Lord. We, I mean, we have seen so many miracles and how God has broken through and how God has provided. And many of you can come up here and share the goodness of the Lord. My sister and Linda and I, we were talking, and, and you know, she, we were talking about finances and how she had been going through for years, a very difficult time. There like was a real poverty stronghold over her life. And, um, you know, the Lord, she just, when, when she was trying, I think it was like last year or so, she was trying to get a job. And, you know, when you're past a certain age, and when you... <laughs> When you're past a certain age and, and, and during COVID issues and you're trying to get a job, it's a little hard, right? Right before COVID hit. And no matter where she went, it was just every, it was just more discouraging. 
news than, than, than good news. But finally, she didn't give up. She said, I'm praising Jesus. I'm going to press through. And she kept saying it and kept doing it. And something broke open. And this year, she's earned more money than she ever has in her life. She got a huge bonus. Listen, that's God. In the natural, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen in the natural. But God, in the worst times, earned, earned the most money than she ever has. See, that's the goodness of the Lord. If there's, there's, you know, and it's like, Lord, I'm calling those things which be not as though they are. I'm trusting you, and I'm choosing to believe truth. What do you believe in God for? Do you have an expectation for it? Now, I know there are, there are times that we're, we're, we're believing God for something, and, and the delay, and sometimes it takes a while, right? There's things that we're trusting the Lord for, and so, and you can get hardened in your heart and discouraged. Now, Abraham and Sarah waited like 25 years. I'm not, we don't have 25 years, so don't get discouraged with that. But just don't get, don't get disillusioned. Don't shut your heart down where you're not choosing to believe the word of the Lord, all right? So the next thing is, are you praying every day? A strong spirit gives us the power to resist the enemy through prayer. We have to pray. Are you, are you say, but you know, I don't know how to pray. Listen, it's talking to the Lord. Just wake up every day. In Psalms 5, he said, you know, I, I, I wake up every morning looking up to you for my guidance, that my steps are ordered by you. You can say, you can pray at night, but do you pray? But I, I just like to, even in the morning, just, just, Lord, guide my steps. And I know you know this. Now, there's also a spirit of witchcraft that can come against us that can hinder our prayers, all right? I'm not talking about witchcraft where they have, you know, skull and, you know, bones and, and blood and, and sacrifices. I'm talking about when uh, a spirit of witchcraft, there's manipulation, control, and dominance. That's what I'm talking about. And the spirit of witchcraft uh, always tries to stop the word from being fulfilled. When that spirit is there, and I don't mean in you, just I don't know how. All I know is that you get disillusioned. You get, it's like 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 uh, you pop the balloon, all the air is released. Never happened to you? We're just like, oh, Lord, I just... I don't have it in me. That could be a spirit of witchcraft. So you take authority over that. You know, you, and I, again, I don't mean that you have a spirit in you. You could, but that's not what I'm referring to. And so in Galatians 3.1, it says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? You see, a spirit of witchcraft, it, it, it causes you to walk in that rebellion and disobedience to the Lord. It causes you to, you know, not really focus on the things of the Lord. It, I mean, it's very clear in the word of God. And so we have to recognize that he's given us tools to take authority over this. We're going to be teaching on Wednesday nights. We're going to start on teaching about strongholds. We're going to do a training and deliverance. And then we'll do more training in the prophetic. But we all have to know how to operate. We have to be aware of what the word of God teaches about these things, okay? So if you're struggling a lot of times, take authority. Plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Take authority over a spirit of witchcraft. That could be, it's in the atmosphere. It's in the media. Everything's negative. Everything tries to put you down. Everything's just trying to suck the life out of you. The No word, no, no life, all right? So don't be afraid of it. He's given us power. He's, and listen, it's not my focus. I just know if I'm experiencing something, I take authority over it and it stops. And so in 2 Timothy 3, 8 through 9, the message is, listen to this. This has, relates to the spirit. There are the, these are the kind of people who smooth talk themselves into the homes of unstable and needy women and take advantage of them. Women who are depressed by their sinfulness, take up every new religious fad that calls itself truth. And this isn't just about women. This is men, too. They get exploited every time and never really learn. These men are like those old Egyptian frauds, Janus and Jambres, who challenged Moses. They were rejects from the faith, twisted in your thinking. That's what a witchcraft spirit is, perverse thinking, defying truth itself. But nothing will come of these latest imposters. Everyone will see through them, just as people saw through that Egypt, Egyptian hoax. That's why we have to know the word. How do you know what's true and what's not? The Bible says that the enemy comes as an angel of light. If you don't know the word, how do you discern? That's how your discernment is developed. 
See, God has given us tools. In 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, in the Amplified, it says, Be well-balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at, at all times, for that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in a fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him, be firm in the faith against the onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the earth. So we see here, he's saying, be strong. I want to be alert in the spirit. I'm not paranoid. Be alert in the spirit. When you're in prayer, when you're worshiping, right, when, you, when you're, your mind is focused on the word, you're empowered, you're strengthened. Listen, the enemy has it out for the youth. You always know that. I mean, we were youth, right? And we knew how we got off track. Well, see, that's the thing. It's like, Lord, we're calling in the youth. We're praying and we're trusting the Lord for awakening. But even now, we don't want to be low to sleep. As adults, as, as being older in the Lord, I want to be awakened. Sometimes we can become so, um, uh, what's the word, comfortable or, or familiar we're familiar with miracles. We're familiar with, oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, I know that. But you're asleep. The Lord is saying, are you awakened in the realm of the spirit? And that's why, again, when we're daily before the Lord, that's what awakens us. That's what strengthens us. In Nehemiah, I was thinking about this this morning. In Nehemiah 4, 6 through 9, this is when Nehemiah was trying to rebuild the wall. Because we want to rebuild our spirit, man, right? So listen to what happens. It says, Nehemiah was building the wall, but, you know, you had Sam Bala and Tobiah, who was like the devil, that was constantly harassing him. Isn't that what the enemy does? Every time you're trying to make headway, there's like, boom, something happens, or something's there to discourage you. Not always, but a lot of times it is. It says here, we kept at it, repairing and rebuilding the wall. The whole wall was soon joined together and halfway um, to its intended height because the people had a heart for the work. We have to have a heart for what we're doing. When Samballot, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashadites heard that the repairs of the wall of Jerusalem were going so well, that the breaks in the wall were being fixed, they were absolutely furious. They put their heads together and decided to fight against Jerusalem and create as much trouble as they could. We countered with prayer to our God and set a round-the-clock guard against them. See, that's how we counter this thing. You're going to have Ajita. You're going to have people from the left family members. Your job, it's like all hell breaks loose in one year. Everything that can go wrong. Isn't that happened to many of us? Like, oh, my gosh, what else can go wrong? Well, that's what happened here. And he said, no, we're not backing down. I'm not coming down off that wall. I'm going to keep in prayer, and I'm going to trust God for this breakthrough. And it says, when looking to rebuild, build your wall there I, well I wrote this there will be resistance are you building your wall of prayer are you praying don't don't get religious about it you can go for long walks and pray you can be in your car praying in the spirit but but you still need to get to that place where you're learning to wait on him where it's not just you talking but are you hearing from him we need that direction in 1 Thessalonians 2.18, in the Passion, it says, We miss you badly, and I personally wanted to come to you, trying again and again, but our adversary, Satan, blocked our way. Every time you have a blockage, it's, now let me just, just say this, it's not that there's always an enemy, but a lot of times it is. And so are you going to just roll over and accept it, or are you going to war with it and say, no, 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 this is my inheritance. You're not taking my family. You're not taking my finances. You're not robbing me of my health. You're not doing it. Even in the midst of the, your trial, you keep pressing and you press through. You know, I mean, I see Terry there with her husband. He, he had a really bad diagnosis. Did you get scared at times? Were you worried at times? Absolutely. That doesn't mean you're not in faith. But you know what? He's here. He's alive. He had a death sentence on his life. See, there's miracle working power in Jesus Christ. And had it not been for the word, had it not been for the tenacity and the persistence and, pre and the perseverance and pressing through, who knows where he would be? But they didn't give up. They did what they needed to do in the natural and in the spirit realm. It, it, it all is combined. It all goes together. 
Psalm 5.3, and I, I quoted it before, but I'll read it in the, in, new, in the NIV. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you, and I wait expectantly. First Chronicles 16.11. There's a lot of scripture because it's good, but we needed to hear it. Seek the Lord in his strength, yearn for and seek his face, and be in his presence continuously. In Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the light of God will illuminate your eyes of imagination, flooding you with light, until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, that is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds us, his holy ones. We, we exercise our spirit through this, through worshiping, through praying. Are you always negative? Listen, if you have a problem with being real negative, we're going to pray for you. Because that, that uh, listen, they got swallowed up by the snakes you know, by the fiery serpents bit them in the Old Testament, it, you open up the door for the enemy to keep you in a place of defeat when you're constantly negative. You see everything negative, everything through a lens of, of defeat. It's not the spirit of God. doesn't mean that you can't say what's happening, but if you're going to focus there, that's going to be a messed up thing. In Ephesians 5.18, in the Passion, it says, And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion, but constantly be filled with Holy Spirit. And so, again, praying in the Spirit, but also being filled with the Spirit is just having my mind set on the Lord. There are times when I wake up where you feel like, Ugh, you know, like, Lord Jesus, never mind about building a wall. I feel like jumping off the wall, you know. And sometimes it just happens. It's not even that situations happened the night before it's just you wake up like that sometimes am i the only one or you know and so it's like oh lord i don't even feel like reading i don't feel like praying i don't feel like doing any of this but i don't let my flesh tell me what to do i go and read and pray and man it's so super there's the word of god is supernatural if you're reading let me just say this if you're reading books more than you're reading the word that's a problem read the word read the book meditate on the word get in the word isaiah 40 Oh, I wrote here uh, about waiting in the Lord. A strong spirit enables us to receive from God. A lot of times we're receiving more of the enemy's lies than we are from the Lord. So uh, a strong spirit enables us to receive from God while a weak spirit makes us subject to the enemy's lies. Always, uh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid this will happen. I'm afraid if I'm around someone, they cough, I'm going to get sick. Uh, I'm afraid that I'll never have finances. I'm afraid I'll be destitute. I'm afraid, of, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Come on, get that out of your vocabulary. Isaiah 40, 31, I'm going to be closing. It says, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. Ooh, I love that. I know uh, Tim had a word about eagles before. And, um, but it says here, those who wait for the Lord, who expect and look for and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles and mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint, become faint or tired. That's what happens. There's that song that we sing about they that wait. I won't even try to sing it, but they that wait on the Lord. Oh, my God, it's so good. And I love that song by Maverick City. And you just wait on the Lord, and you're in there worshiping, and it's like, whoo. Then you start like, whoa, and you get up, and you start putting some Latin music on and start dancing to it, Latin Holy Ghost, spirit-filled music. You know, and you start dancing to the Lord. And, I mean, it's just wild. It's just, I mean, it, it happens all the time. It's like, you know, you can, you get that shot of adrenaline or that spinach or whatever it is. Yeah, Holy Ghost spinach that you get, and you start like, whoa, here's what the Word of God says. And, and it's like the devil's under your feet. He's under your feet. Don't focus on him. There was in our old church, there's uh, Faith. She would say, she was only around five, and she told her father when she wakes up in the morning, she waves to the bottom of her feet. And her dad said to her, what are you doing? She says, I say good morning to him, to the enemy. <laughs> this is a little five-year-old. And now again, do we want to say good morning to him? But at least she knew where he belonged under her feet amen that was a five-year-old and then finally it says praying i wrote here praying tongues Jude 20 in the passion says but you but you my delightfully loved friends constantly and progressively build yourself up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit all right all day long in the car wherever i'm at vacuuming cleaning whatever i'm doing i'm praying in the spirit I'm sitting there before the Lord. So listen to this, and then I'm going to close with this. A weak immune system makes you vulnerable to disease, right? So a spiritual weak immune system enables you to really 
have open doors and really be shot down by the enemy, all right? So I wrote here, God has victory and calls you a conqueror. Satan has defeat and hatred for you. God has abundance for your life, but Satan has death to everything in your life. What does John 10, 10 say? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, he says, I've come to give you that abundant life. God has peace for you. Satan has worry, fear, and anxiety. That's not God. God does not give us worry, fear, and anxiety. God has blessings for you. Satan has curses. God has joy. Satan has depression. God has healing. Satan has sickness and disease. Which is it? So in this season, even as we're fasting, do things that you haven't done before. Like, like meditate day and night. Get scriptures. Write cards out. Do whatever it takes. You know, sometimes the computer for me can get overwhelming. I just write the cards out, and, and I like to read. I like to write. I, have, I journal. I like to write a lot. So I, I write my scriptures out. I, it just works for me. So whatever works for you. If the computer works for you, do it. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I want you to make a decree. And again, this, 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 today's message, the Lord said to me, we're all to evaluate where we're at. And that's a good thing. We all have to evaluate where we're at. And if, if you've been stuck, we'll pray for you. We'll help you. But, but, then, but there's things you have to do. It's not just us laying hands on you. You have to put, be a doer of the word and apply yourself. Amen? So just say, I decree my, uh, that I am healthy in the Lord. My spirit is strong, and it will sustain me through anything I'm going through, or anything, or or whatever. No, just so. <laughs> My spirit is a sustainer, and I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I cannot be defeated. I will not quit. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed beyond. And I accept all that God has for me. The container over my life, the cap over my life is broken off. Is broken off. And I am free to hear from the Lord. I am accepted in the beloved. I am loved. And I choose to love myself. And I decree today that today is a turning point in my life and that I will see myself through the eyes of God as a conqueror, as immovable, as a person of strength, a person of faith, and a person of breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Now, I just want to pray, if there's anyone here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we always want to give you that opportunity. If there's anyone online you don't know the Lord, now's the time. If there's anybody here that wants to uh, rededicate your life, please come up. We have our uh, altar workers that are here to pray with you, but I'm going to pray. So, Lord, we just thank you that you died on a cross for all of us to live in freedom. So, if you haven't accepted Jesus, we want you to come forward. Is there anybody here? that has not accepted Jesus? Okay, does anybody here want to rededicate your life? Okay, so Lord, anybody here want to rededicate? Come on up. Rich, you're in the way. <laughs> we love Rich. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? This is the, this is the greatest day. Come on up here. Amen. I'll tell you, God is good. And you know what I love about him? He's so merciful. Come on up. You want to rededicate your life? Amen. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us to stay where we're at. And the thing that, that's so beautiful about the Lord is that his mercy endures forever. And he's there and he's on our side. So just you can repeat after me. Just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I choose to rededicate my life to you. And I choose to accept you into my heart. Thank you that you are, you have forgiven me and that you love me. And you accept me as your son and you accept me as your daughter. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 
want to bless you and have a great day and just know that the spirit of the Lord is upon each and every one here and you are mighty warriors in Christ Jesus. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to follow up too. If anybody wants to be prayed, have hands laid on to receive the gift of tongues. We talked about that earlier. We're up here to do that. It's biblical. It's in the book of Acts. So uh, we'll agree with you. We'll stand in the gap with you and believe that you'll receive that that manifestation of tongues. And don't forget, we have uh, fellowship over in in the uh, commons area on your way out. You'll see it. Love you all.